Good morning. Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day to all you moms. Online and in the house, give them a big round of applause. If you have a mom that's still here and not in heaven yet, you should be texting her, calling her today, right? Make sure your mama knows how much you love her. Well, a few weeks ago, Brad and I were leading a leadership roundtable. We do those a couple times a month here at MMC with our leaders. And we were teaching from a passage that I want to share with you for just a moment this morning. It was 1 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 6. And it says this, I planted the seed. Say, I planted the seed. I planted the seed. I planted the seed in your hearts and Apollos watered it, but it was God who made it grow. Well, that night... Brad and I were teaching on this passage. It was a few more verses, but as we were teaching on it, um, we had an illustration kind of like this set up and I had taken the seeds and I had dumped them into the little planter's pot. And just so you know, that night I was very transparent. I'll be with you too. I don't have a green thumb. Like I, I am one of those people. My mom has the greenest thumb. She could make anything grow, any dead plant I could take to her and she could literally revive it, okay? But for me, that gene wasn't passed down. So pretty much any plant you buy me, I will kill it. Okay? Well, hold on. In your defense, I mean, our plants usually do pretty good until we go on vacation. <laughs> then for whatever reason, when we get back, they're dead. They're gone. They're just gone. We don't really know why. But we spent a lot of our time at summer camp. And Maybe so I no just don't have them. provision for that. And so anyway, that night I made my point. I put the seeds and I really had no purpose behind it other than just like, no method. I just kind of dumped the seeds into that planter's pot, pushed them down with my fingers, no water. Okay. Made my point, went on about my business. The next day I thought that my daughters had taken the pot back to my mother-in-law, Susu's house. I'd forgot all about it. And last week I walked into the green room and as I went into the green room, I noticed tucked way back in the corner by a table was this planter's pot. Do you see what is in it? You should have seen how excited she was. She was like, oh my gosh, I I grew something. I literally stood there by myself at first. I was in the green room and I was like, oh, oh." Blown away. Oh my gosh. (laughs) I like walked up to it. I was like, oh my goodness. But I was like, what are you doing? I'm like, do you see this? Gave life to a plant. And it was like, God just spoke to me and he was like, you "You know the verse that you were teaching that night? Like you planted it. It was your job to plant it. I'm the one who makes it grow. I'm the one who produces the harvest. And so he literally gave us this illustration. And then he said, plant the seed. That's all you have to do is plant the seed. And so this morning, that's what we want to talk to you about. Because I literally, I kept going, oh, that was just a funny thing. Like that just happened. We're not going to teach on that. And God just kept saying, plant the seed plant the seed. And so somebody in here today, you need to hear this word, plant the seed. That's right. Okay. So before we get too deep into today's message, let's just take a step back for just a moment and let's think about all the different roles, all right, that a mom plays. Have you ever thought about that? All the different hats that a mom wears. We have a graphic for you. So let's just kind of go over these together and just, you you tell me if you think any of these sound familiar. Uh, Accountant, banker, chauffeur, cheerleader, chef, coach, counselor, decorator, disciplinarian, juggler, life coach. I like that one. That's good. Lifeguard, manager, nanny, nurse, nutritionist, paramedic, entertainer, financial planner, gardener, hairstylist, handyman, hostess, housekeeper, investigator, janitor, party planner, personal assistant, photographer, referee, spiritual, referee, spiritual, spiritual referee, advisor, storyteller, teacher, waitress, and... Last, but of course, not least, zookeeper. <laughs> Do these sound familiar? How Do many these feel sound like your home is a familiar? zoo half the time? I'm telling All you. All right. You're so, not alone, Mom. So a, a lot of you younger ladies in the house, you might be thinking to yourselves then why would I want to be a mom? Why would I want to sign up for all of that? And I think all the moms in the room, if you were to survey all the mamas, they would say it was totally worth it, it, right? So worth it. But Psalm 127 makes it really worth it when you look at this way. Verse three, it says, children are what? A gift from the Lord. They are a reward from him. So obviously being a great mom, a, a, a developing, you know, grooming your kids to be spiritual champions. It's a huge responsibility. It's a huge task. And it, it takes a lot. 
to make that happen. Uh, specifically today, we're going to talk about planting seeds in the lives of our kids, but I, I want you to not tune this out. If you're not a mom, don't think that this message isn't for you because it's for all of us. We all have a responsibility as parents, or if you have someone in your life that's of a younger generation, nieces, nephews, we all have a part. We all have a responsibility to pour into those that God has uh, entrusted in our care. And so we want to talk about planting seeds, and we want to talk about what it means to bear fruit in our lives and the lives of those littles. And scripture talks about planting seed and reaping a harvest a lot. In fact, over 300 times we see it in scripture. So it's pretty significant. Today we want to go to John chapter 15 and verse 5. And let's look at what Jesus said specifically in regards to, to, uh, to reaping a harvest and to planting. It says here, he says, I am the vine and you are the branches. Now, this is what we call a conditional clause in the text. So, so the, there's basically, there's like a, there's a cost associated with a reward, all right? But it's conditional. He says, if you remain in me and I in you, then here's the payout, right? Here's the reward. Then you will bear much fruit. It is God's will for you as a believer as a follower of Jesus Christ, it is God's will that you would bear fruit in your life and know this. I love the last part of this verse. We all should have this written somewhere in our office, uh, at home, on your dashboard, in your vehicle. Apart from me, know this, you can do nothing. And how often have we tried to do life without Jesus? And every one of us in this room, if we're honest with ourselves, we would admit it doesn't work. We just wear ourselves out chasing dreams that aren't God's dreams. But when we give ourselves fully to the Lord, we realize that with him, we can do anything. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. I love that verse. So let's go to verse 16. He says, you did not choose me, but I chose you. Who do you think the you is in this passage that Jesus was talking about? Do you think it was just the person he was talking to in this story? Or do you think maybe it's only those who have a, a, a real solid relationship with God? Man, they are just spiritual giants and they've memorized the scriptures cover to cover. Or by chance, could it be that Jesus was talking to you? You are the one he was thinking of when he said this. Yeah. Let's read it again. You did not choose me. You didn't choose him. But guess what? Jesus chose you. And not only that, guess what? He appointed you. He, he gave you an assignment in this life so that, so that you might go and what? Bear fruit. That the fruit would last. Know this before you leave today. It is God's will for you as believers to bear much fruit. Let me say it this way. When you receive Jesus into your heart, you say, Lord, I'm a sinner. I need a savior. Jesus is the son of God and he's the resurrected savior. It's only by his poured out blood and through the power of his resurrection, I can be saved and I confess Jesus to be Lord of my life. And you give him the reins. You surrender, you give him control. In that moment, something called regeneration takes place. There's a transformation where God wipes your slate completely clean. Yep. He takes that old sin life and he wipes it away, never to remember those sins again. Think about that. He wipes your past away. Now you might remember it. The enemy might remind you of it. People might remind you, but he forgets. That regeneration takes place. He makes you brand new in him. He fills you in that moment with his spirit. And through the infilling of his Holy Spirit, it is his will from that moment forward that you begin to bear much fruit. Bearing the fruit comes from the infilling of his Holy Spirit. His Holy Spirit is the one that bears fruit in our lives. So let's look and see what that looks like in Galatians chapter 5. Verse 22, he explains the fruit of the Spirit. This is the fruit that we as believers should see manifested in our lives. This is, if you are a tree, this is the fruit that should be on your tree if you are producing the good fruit that the Holy Spirit desires in your life. And this is the fruit that the Holy Spirit desires to see produced in the lives of your children. 
And so know this as parents, this is the end game. This is the end goal for us as parents is to, is to create this opportunity for our kids to be filled with the spirit that they would bear fruit like this. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. I can, I, can, I can put all of those into one word, Jesus. That's who he was. That's who he is. That's who he wants you to be. And the only way you're going to accomplish this, the only way your kids are going to accomplish this is by, by being filled with his spirit and letting Jesus produce the fruit in their lives. Now, these aren't nine individual pieces of fruit, if you will. If you look in the text, it's singular. It's one fruit that has nine different qualities to it. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. This is what God desires in your life and in the lives of your children. But guess what? It takes planting seed to make that happen. It takes us as parents planting seed in the lives of our kids. It's not, it's my job to plant the seed and say, it's my job to plant the seed. It's God's job to produce the harvest. Let's say it one more time because it's so good. It's my job to plant the seed. It's God's job to produce the harvest. Let's look at one more passage before I hand it off to Misty. Galatians 6, verses 7 through 9. Don't be deceived. Don't be misled. Don't, 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 be, don't be duped. Don't, don't be misguided. God cannot be mocked. A man reaps what he sows. A woman reaps what she sows. Whoever sows to please their flesh from the flesh will reap what? Destruction, right? All of us can relate to that, right? We've had that path of destruction that we've experienced because we were sowing seeds of the flesh. We chase after the things that we wanted that were destructive to our spirit. It, it was contrary to the standard of God's word that he gave us to live by. Yeah. So we went down that path, right? And it didn't work out, did it? No, it didn't work out. Some of you are weak and tired and wore out sitting in this room right now. You don't know what to do because you're wore out from going down this path, the path of destruction. But guess what? There is hope. Jesus is in the house and he is ready to wipe your slate clean and give you a brand new hope and a brand new future in him and in him alone. Whoever sows to please the Spirit from the Spirit will reap eternal life. Let us not become weary in doing good, for at the proper time we will. Say, we will. We will, we will reap a harvest if, it's conditional, if what? Don't give up. Don't give up. You're going to fall down. You're going to stumble. You're going to bust up your knees. But guess what? Get up. You're going to fall down as a parent. You're going to fall down as a follower of Jesus Christ. This is the secret sauce to being a spiritual champion. It's complicated, I know. It's really hard to comprehend. I know. I'm being sarcastic. When you fall down, this is it. Get back up. Get up and knock the dust off your knees and go at it again and again and again and again. There's grace. There's grace for those who give God their very best. We're going to mess up, but God will bless us as we move forward to produce a harvest. You know, every day of our life, from the moment our eyes open and our feet hit the floor, we start sowing seeds. And only we can choose what the seeds are that we're sowing. Are we sowing seeds of frustration and discontentment, of hatred and rebellion? Or are we choosing to sow spiritual seeds that will reap an abundant and fruitful harvest? The character of Christ that Brad was reading about. This morning, we're gonna give you four things over the next few minutes that if you want to pass down that legacy of faith, you wanna plant those seeds in your kid's life so that they can truly live out the calling for which they were created. And I wanna just pause for a second. Like I have, I have said this so many times in my life and yet I'm not sure that everybody gets it. But do you realize that you were formed in your mother's womb and that God literally created you. He gave you gifts. He gave you talents. He gave you desires. All of which he put inside of you as he formed your little body in the womb for a purpose on this planet. Like you and I are not just here to have jobs and find a girlfriend and find a boyfriend and eventually get married and have babies and make money and build houses and buy cars 
and go into debt and live the big American dream. That's actually not why you're here. You are actually here because God said to be fruitful and multiply. And that wasn't just in having children. It was also the fruit, the character of Christ, sharing the love of Jesus with the world, the kingdom of God growing and expanding. And so I want you to understand today that if you as a parent, when you have that baby, God has given you that gift. And it is our responsibility to help that child to understand that very same thing. From the moment they're born to begin to instill in them, God has a plan for your life. To begin to recognize the gifts and draw them out of them. To train up a child in the way that they should go and they will not return. Did I just say that right? Train up a child in the way they should go and they shall not, they shall not depart. I said return. They shall not depart. They will return, guys. They will they return. They will come back. I'm they like, just won't depart from the faith. I think I just quoted that wrong. They won't just depart. They will seed. return. <laughs> The fact is, from the moment they're born, we are given this God-given responsibility. And sometimes, guys, what we tend to do in our own life is we deal with the chaos and the crazy. We do whatever's in front of us, right? When you have a flat tire, you just get out of the car and you have to fix it right there. When the baby's crying, you got to feed them. When the toddler's throwing a fit, you got to deal with it. But listen, God did not intend for our life to just be this hamster wheel that feels like everything is always chaotic and out of control. And I get it, moms. Like, it can be be a zoo sometimes. Like we should have badges that, you know, for all the crazy parts that we play. And sometimes I felt like if people were to come to our house, that's what they would find. Because we had four kids in two and a half years. You talk about a zoo. It was a zoo at our house. But listen, there's four things today I want you to take away as a mom, as a dad, as a parent, as an individual, as a teenager, you need to implement into your life. And the first one is simply this. You've got to possess spiritual seeds in order to sow them. You yourself have to possess spiritual seeds in order to sow them. What that literally means is you're going to need to fill your cup first. Say first. As I said, every morning when you wake up, you're sowing seeds. And look, some of you guys are good at it. Some of you guys are so good at sowing seeds but you've been sowing the wrong kind of seeds. And your life is a result of the seeds that you've been sowing. You're producing the harvest that you've been sowing. But we need to start our day intentionally thinking about the types of seeds we wanna sow. And if we wanna sow spiritual seeds, here's what we have to do. It's a lot of seeds, isn't it? You know why? Because I want a bountiful harvest. Now, I don't know much about planting. I don't know much about sowing, but here's what I do know is I need a whole lot of Jesus in my day. From the moment I wake up, I need to be planting those seeds. What do I mean by planting seeds? Turn on a little worship in your home. Find your Bible and start your day in his word. You say, you don't understand. Like you're, you, you're making it out to be like, things are calm. Missy, my house is crazy. Listen, I raised babies too. I get it. My alarm would be set to go off early before the kids would normally be at that feeding schedule time. I would hope that my alarm, I could hit it fast enough to where the babies wouldn't wake up in our house, but sometimes their schedule and mine was a little bit off. And so there were times that I would have to just be like feeding a baby while I'm reading my word. That's okay. There's times during your day where the kids are flat out just fighting and you're like, can I just have five minutes? Mom just needs five minutes with Jesus or I'm going to hurt you. Okay. Can I have five minutes with Jesus? My kids, we get big eyes. They're like, sure, mom. And sometimes they give it to you and sometimes they don't. But here's what I want you to know. Whether you're a mom, a dad, an individual, you got to fight to make time for Jesus. Every distraction under the sun will happen in your day. Every time you try to find your word, every time you get your phone to go to you version, there will be distractions. You have to fight to plant the right kinds of seeds. And I'll just tell you, if you don't fight to make time to have Jesus in the beginning of your day, you're going to start sowing the wrong kinds of seeds. It's just going to happen because there's going to be people around you and you're going to be irritable. Why? Because if you don't start with Jesus, we are human. 
we are flesh. If we do not die daily to ourself, the natural self doesn't have love and patience and kindness and goodness and gentleness. I want to hurt somebody, right? You get irritable. But if you sow the right kinds of seeds first thing in the morning, making time, finding. I mean, what's your daily commute look like? Do you turn on worship or turn on the word? What, it, what does it look like when you're at your kid's ball practice? You're like, man, my day's been crazy. I haven't even had time to read my Bible. What are you doing while you're sitting there? Do you have to play a game or chat it up with the person next to you? Maybe you need to sit in your car for 15 minutes and just have your quiet time because somebody else is with your kid. You got to fight to make time to plant the right kinds of spiritual seeds. You have to make time for the things that are most important and planting those seeds in your own life personally in order to be the best parent you can be is crucial. It's more important than anything else. So you got to make time. Okay. The second thing that we need to do, if we want to see a bountiful harvest uh, produced, a, a lot of fruit produced in the lives of our children is sow seeds of faith intentionally and generously yeah. to sow seeds of faith intentionally and generously. And Misty, I saw you do this all through our kids' upbringing. I saw you continually as a mom sowing these seeds. It reminds me of 2 Corinthians 9 and 6, which says, whoever sows sparingly, yeah. right? Just like you sowed right over here. You sowed very, very, yeah, yeah bountifully, I mean. Yeah. We'll, we'll also reap uh, yeah. sparingly, and whoever sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. And, and you, yeah. you planted a lot of... I'm looking forward to seeing how I know. much fruit is going to come forth from all the seed that you just planted. But let's, let's get really practical just for a moment and, and let's, let's talk about what does it look like uh, in our daily lives as we plant those seeds in the lives of our kids to see a harvest come forth. Well, the first thing is it doesn't happen by accident. Not in your life, not in your kids' lives. You have to be intentional, which means you gotta have a plan. Like you know there's gonna be chaos, that's just life. But so you have to have a plan. And so, you know, it's, it's as your kids are growing, things that are age appropriate. But when our kids were babies, we were always turning on worship music in our home first thing in the morning. Not because like for me personally, I actually like the quiet. I can hear God speak through the quiet. But for my kids, I knew I need to fill our home with worship. Why? Because worship ushers in the presence of God. If you didn't know that, that's why we start with worship at church because we want this place to be filled with his presence before his word goes forth. So we would turn on worship in our home. When it came time to like literally wake up the kids, we would change it from worship to praise. Then that's the hyper fast stuff. And we would sing and we would dance and they would be annoyed as they started getting older because we're like, mom. But then I would hear them singing along with it. Why? because I'm sowing seeds. I'm sowing seeds. I'm sowing seeds. As they get a little bit older, you know, we would read the Bible to them when they were little. And then when they got a little older, we would buy them their own Bible and we would let them read to us. And then we got a little bit older, we'd buy them a study Bible as teenagers. Then we would say, hey, here's your Bible and here's some highlighters and here's a journal. And did they always do it? Maybe not. But did I ask them every day of their life? Have you been in your word this morning? Have you been in your word this morning? Every day, repeat. Have you been in your word? Yes, mom. Yeah, what did you read? They would quote the verse of the day. <laughs> that's good. That's good. I'd say that's good. Is that all you read? What, is that not enough? Like, well, you might be critical, mom. Is that not enough? Well, I don't know. Do you just want to have a granola bar today? in the next 24 hours, because that's all you're getting if you're reading one verse. I mean, you're getting a snack. You want a snack or you want a steak? You want a full meal. And so we were constantly, constantly pouring into them, planting the seeds, planting the seeds. When the church doors were open, having them in the house of God. When they got old enough to serve on the serve team, we stoked them up from day one, which I mean, you know, when you're church planters, I mean, really, was there a serve team? Yeah. I mean, from the time they could Our carry something, it was like, hey, carry this. They're two years old. It's like, hey, carry this for me. You know, we taught them the joy of being a part of God's family yeah. and serving the house. Being contributors. And so as you go, you have to just be very, very intentional because guys, here's what happens if not. As your kids get a little older, click, technology comes on. They grab a phone, they turn on a TV, and you're just happy. Let's
let's just be honest. If there's not crazy chaos, you're like, woo, score for mom. But not really. Because we're not being very intentional if we're just letting a screen take up all of their time. We have to be intentional about planting the right spiritual seeds in their life to produce a bountiful harvest. We want our kids to go to heaven. Let's just get real, okay? Yeah. Your kids have until the age of about 12, and honestly, in our day and time, probably 10, to have decided who will they serve. By the time they're probably 10 years old at this point, I'm saying 10 because statistics used to say 12. By the time a child is 10 years old, they will have already made up their mind, I'm either living for Jesus or I'm gonna do my own thing. And so parents, those early years are so very vital. But here's something that I heard the other day, and I I never forgot this. I heard this story about these guys, and they were debating what was the best translation of the Bible. And one guy said, hands down, King James Version. I mean, it is the authority, right? I mean, I love how poetic it is. And one guy said, no, 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 no. I like the NIV. I mean, it's today's language. I can understand it better. Another guy said, no, I like the English Standard Version. And another guy stood there pondering for a second, and then he said, you know, my favorite version of all is my mother's translation. They were like, what? What do you mean your mother's translation? And he said, well, for the last 25 years of my life, I have watched my mom live out the word of God from cover to cover. I've watched her be Jesus Through every situation, I've watched her exemplify everything that's taught in the word of God. And I thought to myself when I heard that story, wow, I hope one day that my children are able to say my favorite version was my mother's translation. Listen, I'm not telling you that you're going to be perfect. I'm not telling you that it's easy. But what I am telling you is the same thing that Paul said. He said it this way in 1 Corinthians 11 and 1. He said, you should imitate me as I imitate Christ. As a mom, as a dad, as a friend, people are watching our lives. And guys, you are so quiet. I'm just going to say that. You guys are freaking me out a little bit. You're so quiet. You could talk back to me. We are to keep our eyes on Jesus. When we're going through the storm, we just finished up a series on the storm, keeping your eyes on Jesus, knowing there's somebody coming along behind you, watching you, listening to you. You know, your kids, whether you like it or not, they are a product of you. And sometimes as they begin to get bigger, you can identify literally whose they are. In our family, we clearly have another kid that's a Tyler, We have a couple that's me and literally, and then one that she's just, she's just a beautiful mix. But when I look at myself in my child, I'm just like, I should apologize to everybody who ever had relationships with me my whole life. Why? Because I'm a lot. When Brad deals with his, his complete twin, he literally has come to me and he's like, I'm sorry. I am so sorry. Well, I'm really sorry. I'm really sorry for the last 20 years of our marriage because why? Because you see your younger self. They imitate us. Yeah. Do you want them learning how to say all the wonderful cuss words of the world because that's what they hear? Or do you want them hearing the word of God coming forth out of your mouth? Yeah, because good. whatever, when pressure comes on, whatever is squeezed is coming out. Yeah. Come on, I want you to think about what I'm saying. Man, we got a heck of a lot of little babies running around Mountain Rivers Church. And there's a whole lot of them, guys, that have come from, unfortunately, and you have come sometimes out of dysfunction. And that you can't go back, and you can love your mama regardless, but you can stop that generational curse from going on. You can say, no, 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 no. I'm not sowing destruction. I'm not sowing hatred and bitters. I'm going to sow spiritual seeds, and I'm going to sow them bountifully. Why? Because I want to reap a harvest. I want my kids in heaven. I want them walking out the dreams that God had for their life. Amen. I want to say, too, though, as as parents, um, you know, you can only do what you can do as parents. You can sow the seed and sow the seed and sow the seed. And just know this, that at the end of the day, 
every one of us as human beings, each of our children have been given a gift by God and it's called a free will. They get to choose who they're going to serve. In light of all the seeds that you've planted, they get to choose. So if, if what you're seeing in your child's life or even a grown child's life isn't the fruit of the spirit, don't feel like a failure. Right. If you've done your part to plant the seed, if you haven't done your part to plant the seed, then start right today, right. start today, right now, right planting now. the seed in their life. Yeah. And, and, and the next step comes in point three, but I just don't want you to feel discouraged because you, yeah. you have to know that all you can do is all you can do. Yeah. You can plant the seed, you can be a great parent and you can groom them to be the spiritual champion that Misty was talking about. And let me just give, real quick, just tell you what that looks like. If you wanna know kind of like, how do I know that I nailed it, right? In my own life personally, planting seeds in my own life, but planting seeds also in the lives of our kids, how do we know if we've nailed it? We call it the five habits. We talk about it a lot around here. We did a video on it on our YouTube channel. It's called Five Best Habits for New Christians, but it looks like this. When your child is connected in the body of Christ. That means that they have godly relationships, godly friends. We see that in small groups and accelerate. We see it in life groups, young adults. We see it as adults in life groups. They're connected in a group of some sort, right? We see them growing daily in the faith. We've talked a lot about that. They're, they're in their word. They are worshipers. They love being in the house of God. Every time the doors are open, they love being in God's house. These are, uh, uh, the third habit is about giving. It's about giving generously. Our kids understand the power of the tithe because the tithe is, is, the, is the building block. It is the very basics, 101, of our faith in Jesus Christ that he is provider of our home. And they have seen us all through our whole ministry. They've seen the power of trusting God through the tithe and all of our kids tithe because they've seen it work. They've seen the blessings of God poured out and through our obedience to him by trusting him in that. It's it's also about serving. You talked about that. Serving in the house of God. All of our kids are serving in the house of God. And, and it's only by his grace, right? They could, they could be a million miles from God, but they have made the decision for themselves. I'm going to be a contributor and not a consumer. I'm going I'm to contribute to the house of God. I'm going to give my time and my talent. I'm going to give back to see more people come to Jesus because I know Jesus is coming back. And then finally, it's about sharing your faith contagiously sharing your faith. We've, te we've taught our kids growing up, you have a story for God's glory. Share your story with everyone you know. Do it through just personal contact. Do it, do it through social media, but constantly tell your story of how Jesus has changed your life so that they will want the Jesus that's living inside of you. Guys, it's our job. It's our job to plant the seeds. And then, and then guess what? After you've planted those seeds, this, this third tip right here, this is gonna, what's really going to help you yeah. as you move forward in seeing a harvest come forth in their lives. Then you just pray that that seed takes root. You pray every day. I can tell you that there is so much power, and especially a mama's prayers. There will be seasons of your life where you wonder if you planted enough seeds there will be seasons in your life where you have that number one thing that moms deal with, and that is mom's guilt. Just, I wasn't good enough. I wasn't perfect. Could I go back? Could I have done something different? That's what moms deal with constantly and continually. But here's what you do. You plant the seed, and then you pray. When you pray, it is the water that is just coming oh, in over those seeds. Here we go. We're going to show you this in a I'm couple gonna, of weeks. I'm going to hold on to this baby for a while and see what happens. Because here's what I know is God's word doesn't return void. It doesn't. And so when you plant the seeds, you may have seasons of rebellion. You may have seasons where they're doing their own thing. But I'm telling you, you stand on the word of God. You pray over that seed continuously. I could tell no you if I had time, get, no matter, no how, matter old how old, I could tell you so many stories and, and having a praying mom, I watched my mom in every season of our life when things got tough, when things, when kids were not where they needed to be, when they were wayward, when our family was struggling, when people that we loved were struggling, my mom would be on her knees and she would be praying aloud and she would be fasting like a beast to the point as a kid where I was like, mom, like, I think this is a little overboard. Like, I mean, I'm going, are you going to eat? Are you going to eat? But I watched my mom live it 
And then I would watch miracles come forth because of it. And so I'm telling you today, you don't give up. You pray over the seeds that you have planted. And the final thing, I want to read this scripture to you, Galatians 6, 4 through 5. It says this, pay careful attention to your own work. Say your own work. We're not talking about our neighbor's work. We're talking about our own work. God called you to. For then you will get the satisfaction of a job well done. And you won't need to compare yourself to anyone else. For we are each responsible for our own conduct. Here's what I want you to know, moms, dads, teenagers, every individual under the sound of my voice. Stay focused on your job and stop comparing yourself with others around you. Stop comparing yourself. Man, it is a ploy of the enemy. Social media has blown it out of proportion. Now we can see everyone's highlight reels. Now we can see the best of the best. But you know what? Every beautiful picture with a filter on it, with a beautiful family, I promise you five minutes before that was not beautiful. I can just tell you because I know. I could have pulled up every family picture we ever had. And right before it, I'm like, boys, straighten up, put a smile on your face. Ready? Three, two, one, smile. And then we throw a filter on it and we put it out. We're like, this had the best photo shoot ever. Bunch of liars. Straight up. You and I both know you were sweating. You were mad. You and your husband were fighting. You were going to kill every child you had. But you doggone it. Give me a good picture. That's all I ask. Every mom has said it. Just give me she one good picture. She is preaching truth right now. I'm just telling you this is reality. <laughs> we take our kids on vacation every year. They're all adults now. And I literally, I buy them clothes. We pay for everything. So I buy my boys new shirts. I lay them out for the picture on the final day. And I'm right. like, they know. Don't even argue with me at this point. They're like, that's what you want me to wear? Yep. You want on. the financial funnel to keep coming? <laughs> smile for the picture. When they don't want to smile, I'm like, listen, this is the one thing I ask on vacation. That's it. I don't care. You can eat where you want. We'll go do what you want to do. I just want to be with you. But you're going to smile for mama's picture. You got it? They're like, got it. But guys, the enemy wants you to compare your beautiful picture to somebody else's. And what he does is he tries to convince you that that beautiful highlight reel is reality. Guys, life is hard. Seasons of life are hard. There's moments as moms that you're going to feel like, I just can't do it. I just can't do it. There's going to be moments when you're to your knees in tears with a teenager ready to rip your hair out and give them back, but there's a no refund policy. You can't get an exchange. You just can't do it. Listen, God gave you that gift to you. Single moms in the room, single dads raising babies, God gave you those children as a gift to you. There's no one better to raise them than you. But I'm going to leave you with one final scripture for those when you're struggling. I want you to highlight this in your Bible. Isaiah 40, 31, it says this, but those who trust, say trust. Don't miss this. But those who trust in the Lord will find new strength. Guys, I can't tell you how many days out of my life I take a deep breath and I say, I need to breathe in the power of the Holy Spirit and breathe out his peace because I can't do it on my own. It is only when you trust in the Lord, he says, you will find new strength. This is a promise. It says, they will soar as high on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and will not faint. That is a promise. Moms, hang on to it. There are days when you're going to feel like you can't go on. There are days where you're going to want to throw in the towel, but you can't quit. Nobody else is coming, but I will tell you this. You need to surround yourself with some godly women. You need to surround yourself in Life Village with some women who are just a step ahead of you. Who can say, hang on, mama. It's going to be okay, man. I know what those days are like. Hang on. Don't, don't, don't give up just yet. Don't give up. You're going to reap a bountiful harvest. Why? Because you've been planting seeds and planting seeds and planting seeds and watering with your prayers. You're going to see the fruit of your labor. Don't give up. I want to pray over you this morning. If you're a mom in the house, I just want you to pop up, stand up wherever you are, all the mamas. Mama, stand up. If you're not a mom, you're near one. Just lift your hands towards them. God, we are so grateful for the moms of this house. All of those watching online with us today. Jesus, our moms are a gift. 
God, I thank you, Father God, that today is a brand new day, regardless of what the past has looked like, regardless of where you feel right now, moms. Whether you feel like you've done an amazing job or most, like most of us, you feel like, I wish I could go back and start all over again. Today is a gift from God. Today is a new day. You can begin planting the seeds. God has only asked you to do one thing, plant the seeds. Plant the spiritual seeds. God, I pray strength over every mom in this house and online. God, I pray that on the days that they feel like they just can't go on, that they would remember the promise of Isaiah. If I will just trust in the Lord, he will renew my strength. I will not give up. I will not give in. My children will walk out their calling and their purpose in Jesus' name. I pray strength over every mom in this house in Jesus' name. Moms, you can be seated. As we continue to bow our heads and close our eyes. We've talked a lot about seeds being planted today in our hearts and in the hearts of those that God has entrusted to us. Some of you in this room, you need that seed because your heart is empty. You haven't made room for Jesus to sit on the throne of your heart. And God so dearly wants to see you in heaven but he also wants to see you fulfill that appointment that he's given you while you're here on this planet to build his church. And so he's calling you right now to leave the old life and to bring in the new, to invite Jesus to come inside and allow him to make you a brand new creation in Christ Jesus, to give you a hope and a future. And you can do that by asking God right now just to forgive you of your sins, by admitting that you're a sinner, we're all sinners, and believing in your heart that through, through Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection, He is the Son of God, and through Him you can be saved, only through Him. And by confessing Him to be Lord of your life. And in that moment, the Holy Spirit will begin to fill your heart to overflowing, and you just surrender to Him and invite Him in, and you begin bearing fruit that brings glory to his name. And so I just want to ask you, we had those that gave their life to Jesus in the prior service today. And I just want to know if maybe that's you today. Maybe you're watching online or maybe, maybe you're in the house today and you need to invite Jesus into your heart. You need to make this decision today. You feel God working on your heart right now. We're going to pray a prayer as a church, as a church family. But before we do, I just want to encourage you right now, if you are making that decision to just raise your hand nice and high so we know who to pray for this week. If you would at this time, just raise your hand nice and high and say, I want to invite Jesus to live in my heart. I want to invite him to be Lord of my life. Lord, we love you. Thank you. I see your hand in the back, brother, in the middle. Anybody else today? You say, I want to know Jesus. If you're watching online, I want you to comment all in in the comment section below. Anybody else? Come on, raise your hand nice and high. We're going to be praying for you this week. Thank you. I see your hand in the middle, in the front. Anybody else today? Anybody else? Come on, I want to know Jesus. Well, let's pray this prayer together, church, in support of those making this incredible, life-changing, eternal decision. Pray this prayer. Father, Father I'm a sinner in need of a savior forgive me of my sins i believe with all my heart jesus is the son of god i confess with my mouth jesus christ is lord help me today to bear much fruit and to bring glory to your name from this day forth in jesus name amen